jewelry making friends my name is Joey Balistrary welcome to my channel and to my work table um, I don't even know what to say about this project I'm really excited about it I have been collecting things to do a really elegant oceanic themed bracelet that is packed with charms and a little bit chunkier a little bit heavier than I normally do and I've been collecting things for about three weeks so I won't even show you my project tray <laughs> that's off to the side here because it is full of things but I have gone into my stash and just gotten a little collection of check glass like um, cylinder beads and little drugs and some cool little brick shaped you know oblongs and um, just a beautiful mix in turquoise color of the check glass and I have a little uh, gold-plated hematite little cylinder bead stash here and some really cool potato pearls that are really organic and a little bit chunky they're around the eight millimeter size and I have as I said I've been collecting things so I was on a trip with a friend to Anna Maria Island and I picked up this little pair of earrings to take apart because I wanted this gold seashell charm and I had one of these in my stash, a gold filled lobster claw clasp. I have some uh, gold filled chain here, just a little scrap left over. And then, as I said, I've been collecting, look at this dish. Um, I have a little coin pearl here that's all natural and kind of bumpy and messy and a few of these beautiful little coral charms and some monstera leaf charms that are pave and it just goes on like this a little dolphin um, I've just as I said I've been collecting things for a while for a few weeks with this bracelet in mind and so like one of the things is was just an Amazon find of gold plated um, oceanic like charms and so anything that ends up going into this design I will link in the description box below but I just wanted to show you kind of what's off to the side and I'll just kind of make a little space here um, so I'm planning to have fun with this and I don't know if all of these things will make their way into my bracelet, but I'm going to be stringing it on my favorite bead stringing wire. I'm gonna use the bone color of this 49 strand Softflex Company's um, beading wire, and I'm gonna be using my magical crimping plier with some gold filled Softflex Company crimp tubes, the number twos, they make really beautiful crimps. So I have that ready and then I am going to make start off by making a whole bunch of jump rings, really, really small ones, using the Softflex Company 20 gauge craft wire. It's anti-tarnish. It has a nice plating on it. So I'll be using that. And um, because this is going to be a charm bracelet, I do want to have jump rings on all the charms because I just find that they hang more nicely. So before we do anything, any of that, I just want to share something with you that I have started doing. So this summer I placed an order, I have linked this in a couple of my summer jewelry videos. I placed an order with Amazon for these electroplated gold seashells and they were okay, they're nice, I, did, I do like them. Uh, they, they have a little gloss on the shell already and the gold electroplating goes all the way over the little loops that are already there and I had these in my stash, I don't know even from where, but I really love the idea of putting a metallic gold or metallic silver like around the edge of some seashells so I have done some on my own by hand and I'll just show you the ones that I've already done and I'm going to do one with you. It's super easy. These are the blank ones that I have. Um, and if you are not near the ocean where you can pick up your own seashells wherever you are in the world, I do have, I do, um, Order. I have ordered some from Amazon and I can put a link for that but these are some of the ones that I have done with a gold leafing pin and it is really fun I just have really enjoyed doing it so I've just prepared a few of the charms for my bracelet because you know when I start stringing my beads I don't exactly know what's going to go on there but um, I'm probably gonna do a little 
wire wrap on that and um, like I said I've been collecting I have this little pave sea turtle so let's do um, let me grab the gold pin it looks like this um, I got this on Amazon I can link it below as I said there are two tips a finer tip and then a wider tip and I've actually used both in doing my shells and it comes in a set of two and all you'll need is like a little piece of cardboard or I usually just take like a little piece of plastic from my stash because first you have to shake it like you know there's paint inside and so you have to shake it really well and then remove the cap and you have to like prime it a little bit so um, just by pushing down. So the paint is already flowing on this because I've done some of these. And so let's do this one here. The cowrie shells are so cool because they have all these little natural grooves and when you go along it with the pin, the pin highlights all of that beauty. So this doesn't dry immediately. It does take a little bit of time to dry. So on some of these, I've actually done one side and set it down or then brought in my pliers to hold on to it for me so I could you know continue and I did find that I could if I didn't like something that I had done that I could wipe it very quickly before it dries and then go again if I didn't like something so I just think this is so pretty just that little little touch of gold And then if you want it if you want your line to be thicker or you want more gold then you can go of course back over it and make it more predominant okay so that is all I did to gold leaf my my seashells when I get the um, lid back on my pen and the directions do say as with most acrylic pens and markers to store it horizontally but I'm just going to sit that down and let it dry and so these are um, seashells this one I have ordered this a little pack of seashells that were already drilled from Amazon and I just think they're you know it just saves me I do have a little hand drill but this just saves me like on these um, I did this one and just very carefully just outlined all the little natural spots on the seashell and so when you're turning seashells and natural elements into jewelry it just makes it look um, upscale and you know like a jewelry element and it's really you know really really pretty I love it um, I don't know if I'm going to need this one I let's see I don't know if I'm going to need this but I'm gonna leave these off in the wings and so I'm gonna start because before I start stringing I want to have my jump rings ready because my plan is to literally put a charm in between each bead or every other bead I want this bracelet to be really packed with charms so that's where I'm going with that let me set this aside and so I just have a little piece of my soft flex 20 gauge wire and I'm going to use a six step bail making plier and I'm going to use the tiniest rung on this plier and just make a coil so for those of you who are newer to jewelry making, you can make your own jump rings this way. You just coil all the way down and when you get to your desired length, or for me I just cut a length of wire and I'm going to use up the whole thing um, and then I'm just going to cut them. And so all of my jump rings are anti-tarnish because the wire that I'm using has that coating on it so I've kind of gotten to where I make my own jump rings most of the time instead of buying the ready-made ones so once you have gotten to the end of your piece of wire just pushing against your finger and then come in with your cutter on the flush side and just right where you started just cut one little ring at a time and you get really nice jump rings that way so I'm just going to cut directly up the middle I 
I just snip one at a time and go very slowly. Sometimes my cutters will grab two loops at a time, but I don't try to do that. Okay, let's see, did I get perfect? And there's my little scrap. So all my little jump rings are ready. Hopefully that'll be enough. If not, I will make some more. And then I'm gonna start with a little piece of this bone. I always save my little scraps in case I wanna do earrings. I need about a seven inch bracelet. So I'm going to cut maybe 10 inches so that I have room to make my loops on the end and I decided I was just going to do this as a single strand bracelet because I really want to fill it with charms I really want it to have a lot of movement and a lot of interest I've <laughs> pulled out more than definitely more than I will need here but um, I like to have options <laughs> when I'm designing <laughs> so I'm just going to take out two of my gold filled number two crimp tubes. Um, the secret to getting a beautiful crimp with the magical crimping plier is a really high quality crimp tube. It, it is. If you get ones with really thin walls, um, they can even just, they'll, they, they don't make a nice tube, but they also can just break in half. So I really love the ones from Soft Flex Company. And I am going to start by threading this little crimp tube on one end and looping it back through. I recently um, had somebody was asking me in the chat, uh, or in the comments I meant to say, about like the wires being crossed here. So, um, you, and you can definitely do a fold over crimp method here if you, you know, like that or if you don't have the magical crimping plier. But um, the nice thing is on the, the, the magical crimps, you don't even have to worry about whether your wires are crossed inside at all. You just, you know, get the crimp tube over the wires and then place that crimp tube in the little divot in this plier. When it's centered in the middle, just close it and you'll see that you have pinched the four corners and then just go in the opposite direction. And before you close it tightly, just make sure that you're resting right in the middle and then close it. And then you just go around and around until you don't feel that the plier is doing anything anymore. And like I said, if you don't have the magical crimper or you just prefer the fold over crimps that totally works here this is just you know a normal crimp but I really love the little bead that it makes there and then I'm gonna start with let me set these aside I'm gonna start with my stringing here and I think I'm gonna start with one of these check glass faceted rounds these are six millimeter and I am going to just put that right there and then the other thing that I love are these little gold filled spacer beads I'm gonna put a few of these out here as well this is an Amazon find and they have a pretty large hole too so um, they add a little they add a little something so I'm gonna just string one of those on let me cut open my pearls I actually was thinking more to make charms out of these pearls rather than string them, but they may I may end up putting a few in my stringing process here. And they are like all a little bit different and I just love that. Let's see, I already love it. And then here I'm gonna start with a charm because as I said I want to really fill this up I think I'm going to start with one of these monstera leaves it's so pretty and then 
let's go to another check glass and then I need another charm let's see I think I'm gonna do one of these next so here's where my little jump rings come in handy to open it a little bit more Oh, you guys, I got a new organizer. <laughs> I have to remember where I put everything because, um, you know, I organized myself into not being able to find anything. going to do every third bead. So I'm just going to play with my pattern. I want this to be really full, but I don't want my charms to be hanging on top of each other. So I'm just going to continue like this and just kind of play with my pattern and use up all the charms that I have here and just get my desired length. Aren't these pretty? I just have to show you. This is like a little lamp work cylinder bead that almost looks like a little barbell. It's so pretty. So I'm just going to keep going and get my desired length and I will meet you back when I have worked out my pattern. And on these guys here that I've already done, I am just going to put a jump ring right through here. So I'll do the same thing that I did, but make some larger jump rings to add the seashells as charms. So all of these that I've already added the gold to, they have a hole and I just need a little bit larger jump ring. Like there's the hole on this one and I'll decide where the seashells are going to go in the design as well. So I will meet you back. I am just playing with all of my elements and so this is what I have so far and um, I've actually strung let me back this out and show you I've actually strung my little chain right onto my soft flex wire and just put a couple of tiny little four millimeter drucks at the end wire wrapped and I want to have like this representing seaweed and kelp so I want things like hanging down and I kind of always have seen I know this is like a leaf or a bead cap but I kind of see it as a little bit of seaweed when I mix it in with a design like this so I need kind of a bead that's going to fit inside there and I have gone into my stash I got some recycled glass um, African glass from a bead show about a year ago and I always have a hard time cutting these open because they're strung almost like a necklace in itself but I think I am going to cut this and use one of these because this does look like beach glass it really does it looks like the glass that's been tumbled by the ocean so I am going to open this strand I always have a hard time <laughs> cutting my African beads because they're just strung so beautifully. Come back and just take a few off. They're all kind of odd shapes, which, you know, makes it, um, makes it feel a little bit like beach glass. Okay. Now, let's see, let me choose one that's a little bit, see if it will fit inside. I need one that's going to fit inside this bead, just like that. I like that. I think that I want to do another little piece of this chain, but I'm just going to thread it right on here and let it hang out and then put 
my bead cap that looks like seaweed and then let's see you find a really cool one just wanted to snuggle right inside and then I want to let's see I'm going to thread this chain back around about here and have another little I'm just like representing nope I need a little bit more length this chain is gold filled and it's soldered I mean it's a so solid link so I'm being really really cautious with it because I have to lose a link when I when I cut so let's see I like that that's really pretty and then I'm gonna let that hang down and then I need my next bead here which I think let's see I think I think maybe a pearl would be pretty so let me go in my pearl stash here pick up a really funky one gorgeous okay and then I've been using these little gold hematite spacers that I had left over from another project just to add a little bit of gold in here and um, when I crimp this I definitely don't want it to be too too tight because I want my charms to move I know I have a little bit of a mess here but <laughs> bear with me I just wanted to show you like I paused the camera because this is a completely random pattern and I am just playing with all of my elements because as I said I wanted this to be like a metaphorical under the sea like a coral wreath you know like in turquoise the color of water and but really elegant a statement piece which is a big trend for 2024 but also um, elegant you know and just really really pretty and lots of interest and movement so I'm still playing with my pattern but let me go ahead and wire wrap this and put my jump ring on this I am not sure if I'm going to use my my dolphin yet or not and I do have another monstera leaf because I really love that the pave monstera leaf so let me um show you what I was doing for like these little drucks here and I'm going to do another one for the end of this chain I've switched to my Zuron round nose pliers because it is so tiny and I'm using super fine I think these are maybe 24 gauge ball head pins they're really really petite and I am just doing really tiny wrapped loops so just a 90 degree bend and then put my plier in there right near the tip and bring that head pin wire over and it's the same as a as a normal loop but it is just really really scaled down really small <laughs> And you could do a messy wrap here if you want. I've been doing them a little bit neat, but a messy wrap would look good in this application, really would. It's these head pins are just so tiny. <laughs> and just like always, trim and tuck. Don't want anything, especially on a charm bracelet where this is going to you know move all around my arm and the charms will be dangling and moving so I want to make sure that no matter which way it falls everything is tucked in so I have that little guy ready and then I'm gonna take another one of these head pins see how they are really really fine gauge wire and I'm just going to feed one of these little drucks on there and do that same thing just a little tiny like micro wire wrapped <laughs> loop but on this one before I wrap the loop closed 
I'm going to thread it onto the end of the chain. So just open that loop a little bit and let me just lay this out here. And I am going to cut right about there. And I'm just going to feed to get my finger out of the way. Pull my beads out of the way a little bit. Okay, and I'm just going to feed that wire right onto my chain. I think I'm going to clamp this as well. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit backwards, you know, to um, to do the chain this way. But I'm really wanting to conserve this little scrap of gold filled chain, and you know, really like make sure I don't make mistakes in cutting. So, <laughs> just close that loop now. Like these are so fine. I really do need. I really do need to stay with my really small tipped pliers for this. I see her Oprah. She is underneath my work table, sound asleep, and she is snoring. It is truly a summer nap. <laughs> As I said, when I crimp this, I'm going to make sure that I don't have this really tight because I want my metaphorical like chains, my coral wreath, you know, my seaweed and my kelp to be dangling freely. And like on this one, I've connected these two shells. So they are this way, but when it's on the wrist, they are back to back. So my gold embellished side is kind of showing. And so far, I am really happy with it. I think that I'm going to put a jump ring. I've needed a large jump ring for these shells and then a smaller jump ring for the strung part just because of where the holes are. So just gently get that through there. What I've been doing is stringing it on and seeing if how it hangs. If I'm happy with it, then, you know, I don't do another jump ring. Oh, this is so beautiful and so busy and so unique. I love it. If you are following the jewelry trends for 2024, then you by now have already noticed that pearls are a big thing. So is seashell jewelry and even jewelry that makes a statement like something that's bold is really, really in style. And you know, we don't have to jump on every jewelry trend that comes along, but it is, some of them are just, you know, so lovely and really they're me. So I live in a tropical place and the we wear this kind of almost summer look year round. So this is really classic elegance for me as well as being right on trend this year. So I kind of had this in my head. Let me get a measurement. Let's see. Let me see where I'm at. I am right at six inches, which is about perfect for me. By the time I put my clasp on, um, that's about where I need to be. 
and I've ended with the same bead that I started on. And so now I just have to decide if I want to add more charms into the mix or if I want to change anything. I only got one of these beads in my in my strung part here and only in three pearls there you just have a look and make some decisions before I commit to okay. my crimping now oh, this is so pretty I love the sound that it makes I love the little jingle and I love how full it is and once I crimp, I may even add some more. I actually could, I think I could have one more bead. Let me put my, my gold filled ring on this side. And let me just try to clasp it. Yeah, I can use one more bead. Just, I just have, I'm going to take this out and just add one more bead. And you know what else I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to attach this with a jump ring because sometimes after I wear a bracelet for a little bit, I'll decide to change the clasp. If the clasp fails or if I, you know, don't like it. So I'm gonna go down to one of these tiny little ones and crimp I love onto jump rings. that jump ring. They are gold filled diamond cut and they're nice and thick but you can open them so they do make a good a good closure ring but also a good connector ring and they sparkle because of the diamond cutting well that was backwards i should have attached my lobster claw clasp before i closed it and with the diamond cutting it's really even hard to see where, and they're hard, they are nice and sturdy. I'm gonna put my little, these clasps are also gold filled and they are an Amazon find. And I just love the little, um, like the little pivot. There's quite a few in the collection that have that little pivoting motion. It's so great for a bracelet because no matter how you put it on or clasp it, it doesn't get kinked or stuck. Let's try that again. Put my wire back down through my crimp tube and it looks like it does not fit through that little druck that I put on the end. If I can, I try to feed this wire back down through a few beads. I think it looks nicer to trim away, trim it away from this, but sometimes it's just not possible. Let me check my length maybe I can even take that bead off. Let me just check my length here. Well, with that bead, it's pretty perfect. Oh, this is so beautiful, and I love how busy, I love all the busyness. So beautiful, oceanic charms. Okay, let's just want to be go slowly and be cautious with my before I crimp just because there's a lot going on on this piece so I just want to make sure that everything looks good and it does and I am going to come back with my magical crimping plier and do the same thing that I did on the other side 
just fit that crimp bead right in the divot close the plier and I've pinched the four corners and then go to the side Be careful not to chomp down on your last bead and I can kind of feel when that um, ravioli shape is centered and I feel like it is now I think I've learned to kind of feel and then just do the same thing just go around and around until you know that you have formed the tube into a little round bead and it looks like that and now I can just come come back with my as I said you guys I got a new organizer for my tools and I feel anything but organized because I don't remember where I've placed anything yet in the organizer and it it's um, on a like a lazy Susan and I thought it would be great but so far <laughs> I just haven't I don't remember <laughs> where I've reorganized I've organized myself into not being organized <laughs> So also on the, with the magical crimper, it makes a really, really tiny little bead. So if it's too small for you or you feel like it's too small for the design, you can come back and put a crimp cover right over it. I, I don't mind like on this piece, I don't mind. And I think this is absolutely amazing. I love this little oceanic. It is like a metaphorical, um, like, I, I mean, just like a metaphorical like coral reef even though I didn't do coral I stuck with turquoise and the and the pearl colors but I just love the little the little representation of seaweed with the chains hanging off and the monstera leaf and it is just so tropical and so lovely I am so excited to wear this it's just beautiful and normally I would come back and put a charm either here or here, but I don't think I will on this one because I have so much going on because it is a charm bracelet, but I did have one more little shell that could go as a charm. I don't know, but I, I actually have another bracelet project in mind. So I think I'm going to leave this one just as it is and clean up my mess and I'll put some pictures up at the end of the video and so I really hope that everybody's having a great summer I hope you found some inspiration in my little random mix 2024 trend um, oceanic <laughs> charm bracelet and I thank you so much for watching if you haven't subscribed to my channel it's a great way to support my work and um, tap the bell notification so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos and I hope everyone's safe and well and having fun on your beading mats and I will see you in the next video ciao jewelry making friends